Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Oh yeah, let's do this today. The Ultimate Self-Employment Guide to Filing Estimated Taxes. Whew, this is going to be a doozy. First, a quick word from our sponsor. A credit union that offers Bitcoin? Give me five. (laughs) For a limited time only, get $5 of free Bitcoin through the Southland Credit Union app. Enrollment is quick and easy. There's no hidden fees, and you can conveniently fund Bitcoin purchases directly from a Southland account. Claim your free Bitcoin today by going to thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland. Bitcoin accounts and services provided by NIDIG, not NCUA insured. Restrictions apply to Bitcoin bonus. See terms. And don't forget to check out thecollegeinvestor.com slash Southland to sign up. Oh yeah, let's get to it. Side hustling, self-employment, entrepreneurship offer the promise of financial flexibility, but four times per year... Hustlers feel some pain. I feel your pain, hustlers. That's right. For self-employed people, tax time comes four times per year. And you'll almost always owe some money. So today we explain what quarterly tax estimates are, how to figure out how much to pay, and how to save money for the estimates. It also gives a step-by-step guide to paying for the quarterly estimates. With this guide today, the only pain you're going to feel is the pain associated with actually paying taxes. What are quarterly tax estimates anyway? When you work for a traditional employer, your employer withholds federal income tax, state income tax, Social Security, Medicare taxes, all of those from your paycheck. Your employer also kicks in its half of Social Security and Medicare taxes. When you're self-employed, nobody withholds taxes from you. However, those taxes still need to be paid can't get out of it. And according to the IRS, you must make estimated tax payments for the current tax year if you'll owe at least $1,000 at the end of the year. And you expect to owe at least 90% of the total tax due on this year's return, or at least 100% of the tax on the prior year's return. If you're newly self-employed and you've always received a refund in the past, you may expect that you won't owe at least 1000 bucks. Unfortunately, for most self-employed people, that's just not true. Since self-employed people have to pay Social Security and Medicare taxes on all of their profits, they'll likely owe some money, even if they don't owe federal income tax. This includes people that side hustle driving for Uber or Lyft and more. Grubhub, food people, I'm looking at you. Basically, if nobody is withholding money from you, you should expect to cut a check to the IRS every single quarter or you could face penalties. For tax year 2022, quarterly estimates are due on the following days. Of course, April 15th, 2022, you might know that day, June 15th, 2022, September 15th, 2022, and January 15th, 2023. Thankfully, paying quarterly tax estimates isn't actually a really that big of a deal. You don't have to file any paperwork. You just simply pay what you think you'll owe more on that just in just a bit, online or using a paper payment voucher. If you end up overpaying or underpaying throughout the year, you can shore up the difference before April 15th, 2023, tax day, and you'll be just fine. If you underpay, you might owe some penalty interest. But even this penalty isn't really that bad, unless you underpay a lot. Right now, the penalty rate is 4% per year, and it's only calculated by the amount of time you owed the government money. This year, you can use Form 2210 to figure out how much you owe, or simply use a tax software program to calculate it for you. How much should I pay each quarter, you may be asking? All right, as a business owner, estimating your quarterly tax payment is entirely your responsibility. Unfortunately, figuring out how much to pay is a little bit of a guessing game. However, there are a few tricks to making the estimates. Here are the five most common methods for estimating your payments. Find one you like and stick with it. Withhold a ton from your W-2 job. I did this my last year before going full-time. If you're a side hustler with a W-2 job, you might get away with withholding more from your W-2. 
You can either claim a zero, no deductions, to increase your withholdings, or just specifically ask HR to increase holdings. Withholdings. People earning less than $1,000 per month can probably get away with withholding more from the W-2 job and avoid quarterly taxes altogether. If you're married and filing jointly, you can also have your spouse increase withholdings. Between the two of you, you can likely withhold enough. Again, this is only a strategy for side hustlers or people who aren't earning a ton of profit from their business. If you have profits above $1,000 per month, you're going to have to need to choose another method. <laughs> this was the strategy that I personally used for most of my years of side hustling in college. You can also use last year's taxes. Using last year's taxes to make quarterly estimates is not an accurate way to pay quarterly estimates. However, it's good enough and takes almost no time at all. To avoid paying a penalty, the minimum you need to pay, in most cases, is 100% of your total tax burden from last year. If you earned over 150 grand, you need to withhold at least 110% of last year's tax bill. To do this, simply look at your total tax burden from last year. Line 39 on the 1040A, line 63 on the 1040. Now, divide that number by four. Pay this amount each quarter. For example, if you owed $8,000 last year, you'll pay $2,000 per quarter. If you're married and you file jointly, subtract the amount your spouse had withheld, federal income tax only, and pay the remainder. Just remember, if this is the method you choose, you may still owe money in April 2023. And if possible, save a good chunk of your profits so you can use savings to pay taxes rather than getting behind. Estimate using some tax software. The IRS recommends that self-employed people estimate quarterly taxes using the 1040 ES. This requires estimating your total annual profit and a lot of calculating by hand. To make this easier, you could use a free tax software program like TurboTax, H&R Block, Tax Act, Tax Slayer, or others to estimate your total tax burden for the year. Most people who do this will multiply their first quarter revenues by four and their first quarter expenses by four. Then, they will plug those numbers into the software. The software will show an overall federal tax burden. Divide that number by four and pay that as your quarterly estimate. You can use the same amount each quarter or update it as the year goes along. I actually used this method for a few years, and I always paid close to the right amount. Withhold a percentage of your profits. The previous three methods allow you to make the same tax payment each quarter. But this method offers a little bit more flexibility while still being relatively easy to implement. First, using your previous year's tax return, calculate your average tax rate. That means divide the amount you paid in taxes. Line 39 on the 1040A, line 63 on the 1040, buy your adjusted gross income from last year, line 21 on the 1040A, line 37 on the 1040. This number gives your average tax burden the previous year. If your average tax burden was 20%, then you can withhold 20% of your quarterly profit. If you and your spouse expect to earn more money this year, you can simply increase your estimated tax burden. For example, you might pay 25% of your income instead of 20. Use great business accounting software. So trying to figure out how much money to pay toward quarterly estimates might feel like more art than science, but to make it easier, you may want to consider using a bookkeeping software program that generates tax estimates for you. Unfortunately, most highly rated bookkeeping software programs don't bother estimating taxes. In fact, in our review, we only found that QuickBooks Self-Employed and GoDaddy Bookkeeping were actually up to the task. Both of these software programs clock in about $4 to around 12 bucks per month, depending on the package you choose, so they aren't overly expensive. If you pay for business accounting software, consider switching to one that estimates taxes for you. It's a huge time saver and makes cutting the quarterly check that much easier. How do I actually pay my quarterly estimates, you might be asking. Okay, so once you decide how much to pay, it's time to actually pay them. Again, the due dates for quarterly estimates are April 15th of whatever year it is, June 15th, September 15th, and January 15th. To pay, 
you could mail in a check with a voucher, and you'll actually have to look at page 5 of the 1040 ES to figure out where to mail your check, because every state is different. However, the easiest way to pay is just online. You just go to irs.gov payments. Then find the box entitled Pay Your Taxes Now. You can choose between direct pay, where you connect directly to your bank account, debit, or credit. This, a quick note on paying with a debit or credit card. When you pay with a debit or credit, you have to choose a payment processor. The least expensive is pay1040.com. When you use pay1040.com, you'll pay $2.58 for a debit transaction or 1.87% for credit transactions. If you opt for this method, navigate to Form 1040 ES Estimated Tax on the pay1040.com homepage. Then, follow the steps which will require you to enter the amount you want to pay, your personal information, especially social security numbers, filing status, address, and more, and your payment information. Checking out is similar to checking out from an online retailer, so it's fairly intuitive. Just be sure to save your receipt. You don't want to dig through a bunch of old credit card statements to figure out how much you paid when you filed taxes next April. <laughs> Paying using direct pay. If you opt for direct pay, you then have to select Make a Payment. Then you'll be directed to a new screen where you must select a reason for the payment. The reason should always be estimated tax. Then you'll need to verify your identity using information from previous tax returns. This will just take a few seconds to fill out. Then you'll move on to the payment processing page. And here you're gonna enter in the payment amount, your bank account information, and an email address where you can receive a receipt. After all that, you submit an electronic signature and your payment goes through. From start to finish, the whole process takes like three to four minutes, tops. Now, let's take a look at how to save money to pay quarterly estimates. If you run a profitable business or side hustle, you'll almost certainly have to pay taxes this year. If you have a low income and qualify for earned income tax credit, you might escape owing taxes, but that's the exception rather than the rule. Self-employed people almost always owe taxes because they have to pay the 15.3% of their profits toward, so, toward Social Security and Medicare. And on top of that, you're going to have to pay whatever federal income taxes you owe. Personally, I've found that the easiest way to save money for taxes is to set my tax money in a separate online money market account. Money in this account pays for taxes and nothing else. Each time I get paid, I set a percentage of the income into the account. Separating tax money from other money makes it easier to set aside. If your business involves many transactions, setting aside a percentage of each transaction might not be realistic. Instead, each week when you pay bills for your business, pay a savings account with your tax bill. If you break your quarterly estimate into 13 even payments, you can save the same amount each week. If you can't afford the full amount one week, just try to compensate the next week. If saving money each week or each time you get paid isn't really realistic, just do the best you can. Paying a little bit each quarter is better than paying nothing at all. Another way is to pay yourself first to lower your tax bill. Take advantage of things like a solo 401k to save for retirement, which will reduce your tax bill each quarter. And year... You can also have an HSA account and save as well, because we think the HSA account is one of the best ways to save for retirement, not just medical expenses. Okay, we get asked this question a lot. Should I pay my quarterly estimates with a credit card? Hmm. When you pay using a credit card, you add 1.87% to your tax bill. Is that a waste of money? Or is it a smart move? If you're not into credit card churning or travel hacking, just use direct pay. You don't want to wind up in credit card debt just to pay your taxes. On the other hand, if you pay off your credit card in full, in full each month, and you're into travel hacking, paying with a credit card might actually make sense. But here are three ways paying with a credit card can work out. Credit card bonuses. If you're not really a big spender, but you're kind of working toward a credit card spending bonus, Taxes are an easy way to get you over the hump. Just remember, you still got to pay that bill at the end of the month that you use it. Also, this really only makes sense to do 
if you wouldn't get the bonus through regular spending. For example, we have credit cards that have awesome bonus offers right now, and you could make the spending limit in one month. You can see that link at thecollegeinvestor.com. Maybe you're hacking the system. Another way to use credit cards, air quotes, to pay your taxes without actually using credit cards is to buy reloadable Visa gift cards. Reloadable Visa gift cards are actually debit cards, so they're only subject to that $2.58 fee. Sometimes you can buy Visa gift cards at discount or with minimal fees. In a worst-case scenario, you can buy a $500 gift card for $5.95 through giftcardmall.com. Between the $5.95 fee and the $2.58 debit fee, you end up with a 1.7% total fee for each $500 in taxes. It's a little bit cheaper than a 1.87% credit card fee and it gets you toward your bonus a little faster as long as your card gives you at least 2% back and helps you get a bonus. The extra fees could make sense. And the third tip here, significant spending bonuses. Every once in a while, you'll see Chase Freedom offer a 5% category bonus on PayPal. As it turns out, you can use digital wallets like PayPal to pay for taxes. Takes a bit of jumping through some hoops, but you could spend 1000 bucks on PayPal, earn 5,000 points, and spend just 2% to process payments. In that case, you come out ahead. If you have cards with category bonuses, be sure to look for digital wallet bonuses to maximize your points. And a little bit lengthier than usual today, but I hope that gave you a ton of ideas on how to save for your quarterly taxes if you're self-employed. If you want to find out more, find reviews. We talked about a lot of different things today. You can just jump inside this article, copy and paste the title of the podcast right into the search bar at thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.